So hello everyone, this is Wen Tao Yan from the National University of Singapore. Today I will talk about our work on integrated multi-physics modeling of process structure property in additive manufacturing. So this work uh, mostly done by myself and my postdocs and uh, PhD students. Uh, so what the questions we want to answer through multi-physics modeling are what's happening outside like pod motion, surface roughness, what's happening inside like pores, voids, green structures, and what are the mechanical properties. So we developed a series of models, including multi-scale modeling of melting process, pod dynamics models, green evolution models, and integrated process structure property models. And we have linked all these models together. So this is a modeling framework. When we got the fabrication parameters, we input into uh, the process models to predict the pod spreading and pod melting, uh, including the temperature profile and void formation, and then implement it into the green evolution models using either cellular automaton method or phase field method to predict the green evolutions. Then we implement it into a crystal plasticity model to predict the mechanical properties. With this, you know, we can replace most of the trial and error experiments, like the manufacturing experiments, microstructure categorizations, and mechanical tests. So for the process modeling, so there are mainly two procedures. One is apply powder layer, uh, then is a, a powder melting process. So we develop a powder spreading model using the discrete element method where we simulate the pod motion and the elastic or inelastic collisions, friction, and gravity. Called the pod bed geometry implemented into the pod melting model, then uh, got the uh, solidified track shape implemented back into the pod spreading model to apply the another pod layer. We reproduce, we repeat these proce processes uh, like experiments to fully reproduce what's going on in the experiments. So for the pod melting model, uh, in addition to generating the pod bed geometry, we also use it to understand and optimize the pod bed quality like packing density and surface roughness. And also it can provide guidance for the design selection of the shape uh, of the powder or uh, powder recall roller of spreading, rotating speed, powder size distribution, and layer thickness. So we investigate both the rig type powder spreading and roller type powder spreading. And we also conduct a variety of experiments to validate the model. For example, here, the roller type powder spreading, we put a portfolio meter to in situ measure the surface roughness of the powder layer and compare with the simulation they agree well. And for the rig type power spreading, we investigated the influence of powder size distribution and layer thickness on the packing density. And you can see the simulation and experiments agree pretty well. More importantly is we can understand the underlying physics, including different effects caused by the size of the powder. I will not talk about the details uh, but if you are interested, you can read our papers we published on actor material here. And there are some recent works in my PhD student, Zhe Shi Yang's talk. Uh, for the pot melting model, we can reproduce as a boiling effect, non-uniform track, and also understand the underlying physics, which is essentially due to the surface tension. Uh, to quantitatively validate our model, we collaborate with U.S. National Institute of Standards and Technology. Uh, they do uh, very precisely controlled experiments of single tracks on bare plate to exclude the randomly packed pod layer. So they use three different scan strategies with different setting of laser power and scan speed. And you can see uh, different scan strategies will result in different surface elevation. Uh, and our simulation can, 
can uh, match the semi uh, the result pretty well with the difference below two micrometer, which demonstrates the high accuracy of our model. And also we valid our model against the molten pool waste. In experiments, you know, we can measure uh, the molten pool waste at different locations and get the standard deviation and the mean value. Uh, in the simulation, we can also get the mean value and standard deviation and they work very well. And uh, we also can simulate uh, multi-layer, multi-track manufacturing process, no matter what's the rotation angle in experiments, we can reproduce it in a simulation. Uh, this is a 90 degree rotation case. You can see uh, this is already second layer. This is a free surface view. We can see how the lack of fusion voids are being formed. So actually the shape size of this lack of fusion voids uh, and also the space distribution agree well between the simulation and experiments. Uh, but those are mostly poster process validation. So we want to directly validate our model against the experiments. So we collaborate with the US Argon National Lab so using their high-speed X-ray imaging, you can see the shape, size of the molten pool and the K-hole all agree well with the in-situ observation, which demonstrates the validity of our model. More importantly is uh, we uh, can supplement some more information that cannot be measured easily in experiments like the energy of subjectivity at different locations here. And we also plot the K-hole depths at different locations. And you can see there is a good correlation between the K-hole depths and the energy of subjectivity. So that is because a shallow K-hole will induce fewer laser reflection. So uh, the energy of subjectivity will be lower. But if it's a, a deeper K-hole, then there will be more re laser reflection. Then the energy of subjectivity will be higher. Even for, diff, uh, for the same power, but different scan speed, you know, the energy of subjectivity will be different. So more works you can find in the talks by my PhD students, Lu Wang and Ho Yi Chang. And actually in laser powder band fusion, the, uh, the powder are moving all the time. So what we call laser uh, powder spattering and denudation. So we develop a model a uh, multi-phase flow model to simulate this process. And you can see this powder spattering and denudation, uh, they all grew well. So because we simulate the interactions between the jet, vapor jet, ambient gas, and also the power particles. Uh, more importantly is uh, we simulate, a model can provide more information that is not easily measured in experiments like the, uh, velocity and temperature of the vapor of gas, I mean gas and power particles. And due to different uh, K-hole shape, actually the vapor jet can have different directions like forward, upward, and backward. Now in our simulation, we can also well reproduce all of this and also the power spattering and the denudation. So for more details, you can find in my uh, PhD a postdoc Hui Chen's talk. And actually we also have uh, the model for the directed energy deposition process. No matter, you know, it's a single track or single track, multi-layer or curved tracks. You know, we can all reproduce it well in our simulation. Uh, so with the temperature profile from this melting simulation, we can implement into a grain growth simulation. Particularly, we incorporate a, a nucleation model where uh, we can explicitly capture the nucleation set, like this, like this pink dots. Uh, so we can both in, uh, reproduce the epitaxial growth of an uh, uh, heterogeneous uh, nucleation grain growth. And we validated this experiments against, uh, we validated our simulation against experiments. So the size, morphology of the grains all agree well with uh, experiments. So in even smaller scale, like dendrite growth, uh, we have model to simulate that. Uh, 
so we also compare our simulation with the S3 imaging results, but this is a simple case uh, in casting. And uh, you can see both the morphology and also the growth rate agree well between the simulation and uh, experiments. So for the solid state phase transformation, especially for electron beam powered by the fusion because of the high preheating temperature, uh, it's, uh, the precipitation is significant. So we simulate this and the simulation shows the precipitation mostly occur uh, near the green boundaries for this material. And it agree well with the experiments. So for more details, uh, you can see it in my PhD student EFONG use talk. And with the green structure information from either simulation or experiments, uh, we can implement it into a crystal plasticity model and then use mechanical tests to validate the model. So these are the uh, results for tension and compression tests. Now you can see they agree well between the simulation and experiments, but notably, you can see there is a around 400 megapascal difference between the yielding stress uh, between the tension and the compression uh, test. This is mainly due to the reduced stress. So this means the reduced stress is pretty significant. So we develop a model for uh, the thermal stress where we input the thermal fluid flow simulation results into a finite element solver to simulate the thermal stress. You know, the advantages are, you know, we can incorporate the accurate temperature profile and also the realistic geometry like void and roughness so that the prediction accuracy will be much better than conventional models because in conventional models, the surface are perfectly flat. Uh, uh, there is no voice and also temperature profile are not so accurate. So for more details, you can find uh, in my student Fantin's talk. Uh, actually, uh, you know, the uh, reduced stress will uh, fluctuate between grains. So we want to investigate the grain scale reduced stress. So we implement this, uh, we implement this thermal fluid flow temperature profile into the phase field model uh, to simulate the grain growth and then implement both the temperature profile and grain structures into a crystal plasticity model of the micro scale reduced stress. We can simulate the thermal stress formation during the laser scanning and then the relaxation during the cooling stage so that finally we can get the reduced stress. We validate this, this model against the experimental results of the lattice string. And then we can investigate the plastic deformation redistribution uh, during the cooling stage. So which is not acceptable, uh, not accessible uh, in experiments. So for more details, you can see uh, my PhD student Dai Junhu's talk. Furthermore, we collaborate with Shanghai Jiao Tong University. Uh, they found in their experiments uh, high, high density dislocation in additively manufactured copper, which is like uh, two to three orders of magnitude higher than conventional samples but previously proposed mechanisms like cell solidification or non-particle blockage cannot explain the formation of these high density dislocations. Our simulation review the tension compression cycles of thermal stress, which is uh, the origin of these high density dislocations. Okay. So today I just very briefly go through uh, the models we develop in our, uh, in our group. So if uh, interested, you are welcome to watch the presentation by my postdocs and students, and also read the papers listed here. With that, I'll end my presentation here, and I welcome uh, your questions in the lab session or through emails. Thank you.